Hi, I'm Sam, and in this video I want to explain you more about the Da Vinci line or the multi-rope, how it's called in circus. I want to show you how to set it up and how to make your first tries. So here I fixed a four and a half meter long piece of the Da Vinci line in my room. And that's just about the minimal distance that can work out. For taller people it probably even needs to be a bit longer because in the end you need to like push the lines outwards and if there is no pressure pressing against your hands or against your legs you will not be able to make a smooth turn. So here it's a rodeo line but if you put more tension into the line the piece of multi rope needs to be longer. So with about one kilonewton I took a piece of 8 to 10 meters that it works out that there is not too much pressure against your body. So this is the rubber cord to absorb the shock in case you fall onto the line. I connect it with a binder to a swivel. A swivel can simply turn openly so that if I make turns that the line doesn't get tangled. And then I fixed the entire line four slack lines with one knot and I really make sure that all the four lines are up, have absolutely the same length. And I backed up the rubber cord with a second sling and rope, just that if this rubber cord breaks, that I don't get hit by any metal part. And on the other side, I fixed it with two knots of a figure eight. A much nicer solution, of course, would be to have everything soon instead of having knots. So to mount that construction, I make sure the four lines are not tangled. I take two lines to the top, two on the bottom. That's still easy. Then I mount like on a slack line. I'm just balancing on a rodeo line. And I put the second foot onto the line that is right beside. So this is quite a stable position actually. And I can start playing a bit, pushing the line a bit to the side and see how it feels. Make sure that both feet are on the same height, that it, there is not one foot to the front and one to the back, but that it's really on the, on the same height. And with the hands, it often happens that they are too much back. So you can go down to your feet, grab the line here, and like this you're gonna know that all four like hands and feet are on the same height that when you turn that you will not fall backwards. And the right position in the slack line is when you're able to, to push like to this, to extend your arms like that and from here on it's gonna be quite a lot of pressure to press it out. Like this you already have stable shoulders. So you can try a few times to push the legs outwards and to press your arms against the line. If there is not enough pressure acting against your hands, you can simply go a little more to the front, because here the geometry changes. And here I feel there is too much pressure against my hands, so I go a little back again. You just have to find your right position in that line. So when you found that, you can start to slowly lean to the side. And from here on it becomes more dangerous. Because if you just go here and your arms are giving in, you will land on your head. So make sure to have a thick mat underneath the whole construction. And to just go really slow into it. So to slowly get used to the forces that are acting on your arms and shoulders, you can go a bit down in your knees and then start putting some pressure onto the arm, onto the lower arm. Back. Take the second arm over the first one and then slowly extend your legs. Always with the shoulder extended. Like this you can get used to the pressure go back just by giving in in the knees. Try that on both sides, go down in the knees, push the other arm down, go over the first arm with the other one and now start extending the knees and also open up the hip. 
when I'm down my hip is like really bent uh, to the side and now I start opening up and by opening up the hip the pressure onto the shoulders is increasing Back. and also by this hip movement is this is a really important point to start the whole rotation so by taking it in to this side I will start the rotation to the same side so I go in back when I'm at the highest point my hip goes on back and back if you want to go on now take the right leg to more to the right side straddle more straddle more and you will get into the handstand position so if you want to stay in the handstand position if I put pressure on my right hand the slack line will go here if I put pressure on the left hand the slack line will go to this side and like this you can really build up the stability to then always control your turns in case you want to mount a line that is a bit higher up you can just sit onto two of the slack lines position your feet and pull yourself up with the two other slack lines and then again make sure that the slack line is at the right place that you grab the slack line at the right place with your hands and grab the lines in a way that the palms are face, facing outwards not like that but like that and then again check that everything's good here that you really have to push against so now for the turn try not to go in a position like this but try to straddle a lot and in the end a turn is similar like a cartwheel on the ground so you can get momentum by standing on the left leg if you want to turn on the right and then with some momentum go into it and just really during the whole turn press against the slack line and wait long enough until you go dynamically because if your shoulders are giving in while turning well it's dangerous for the shoulders but you can also hit the ground with your head so be prepared for that make enough warm-ups do some handstands for a warm-up all right go slow it is potentially dangerous but by building up slowly, like I showed you right before, you should be safe. Have fun with the new construction. Mm -hmm. <laughs>